20 minutes after six, welcome again as we get into some serious discussions. Uh, now we're gonna touch base with the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association. Their president, Edie Stewart, joins me on the Zoom line. Uh, good morning, Mr. Stewart. Welcome to the Morning Brew. Thanks for having me. Morning to you and your listeners. Indeed. Now, I'm watching what's happening in Grenada, and it's a far cry uh, as it relates to Trinidad when compared to the government there are going to treat their nurses, from what we understand, for, for their particular efforts on the front line. Um, I think the whole nation agrees that you know, you all should be truly applauded. You all are in the trenches, uh, front, front, front and center in this battle against COVID-19. But uh, there is dissatisfaction in the ranks, and I want you this morning to, to truly explain where's the core of this dissatisfaction and what can be done uh, to, to resolve uh, such uh, disdain uh, and, and, and discomfort within, this, within your fraternity. Definitely. Um, even prior to the pandemic, the onset of the pandemic, it must be known that the regional health authorities and by extension the Ministry of Health have really not treated nursing and military personnel in a manner that reflects that they are really interested in their issues. The trend to be registered nurses have been at nauseam, and the audience have been right here on this very program and other programs highlighting the several issues affecting nursing and military personnel. And top priority of all of them is the issue of temporary employment, the ongoing and unethical practice of temporary employment for nursing personnel, the same nursing personnel who you deem to be essential and cannot do without, you are offering them a continuous temporary form of employment. Is this what, a kind of contract, this is an ongoing contract scenario where it's renewed, how, how long are the contracts in terms of short term and long term? Well, it varies from RHA to RHA. It could be as short as three months and as long as one year. And this has been the template. It really started off within the NCRHA and it has now mushroomed to nearly all of the regional health authorities because the other regional health authorities, in their wisdom, have found a way, have realized what NCRJ has been able to do, probably in excess of 10 years, by having these short-term arrangements, thereby you deny all of the workers um, who you place on these continuous temporary forms of employment, all of the benefits that comes with contract, a true, proper contract, and also you de deny them the benefits as if they were permanent. So you deny them on both fronts. And it is really unacceptable for the Nurses Association to really allow this to continue ad nauseum while we are in a pandemic. Imagine these very nursing and military personnel who rely on to treat the most severely ill of our population and, and risk their lives and be so inconvenient and be in these hot zones for eight to 12 hours, you are not affording them the basic decency of job security. And that is really unacceptable. Mr. Stewart, I was doing research. Is it true that some of the nurses are still working on a 2013 salary? The whole public service is working on 2013 salaries. And this is what we... Uh, to get home to the wider populace and not even clamoring. We all we want, all we require, all we wish and pray is that we are paid the 2013 salaries that you have promised us. So even though we are on 2013 salaries, a number of nursing personnel are not even being paid the correct 2013 salary because every single year your increment is supposed to go up incrementally. Um, and just by a few $200 is a very small amount. So not even that, we are being paid the correct amount. So October 1st is also the demand that the government meet their commitment of paying outstanding increments, meet their commitment of being paid outstanding gratuity payments, and also resolve once and for all this continued unethical, immoral practice of short-term employment for nursing personnel. When you place the money on the short-term form of employment, which is against the very human resource policy 
of the RHA. It is against the very policy of the government because the government has a template for contract employment, three years. And in fact, they offer it to all Cuban nurses who currently reside in Trinidad and Tobago, who the government has recently brought in, as recent as this year, brought in Cuban nurses, placed them on the very template that they have approved. And you do not see the need to place our own local, locally trained nurses on these reasonable three-year contracts. Not even that they, they, they prefer to do. They prefer to impoverish the nursing personnel, and they will not treat any other group um, within, they will not treat police differently. They will not place a police officer on three months or six months. They will not do a prison officer. Why do they feel the need to do that to nursing personnel? Is it because the profession is predominantly female? And we, we try to understand why they see the need to insult nursing personnel. What you're in saying, this what you're saying this morning, I know the audience listening in um, will find it staggering. Um, it's it's mm -hmm. absolutely shocking what you just established. I want to find out as it relates to tomorrow, that day of prayer, um, what's going to be the on the ground situation at the nation's hospitals? Uh, nurses, are they going to stay home and, and, and do their day of prayer? Uh, are they going to go to work and go in a corner and do their day of prayer? What's What's the scenario tomorrow uh, on the front line? Well, it is whatever nurses decide to do and how they decide to engage in this day of prayer. What we are telling them, basically, it is to find a quiet place for 24 hours and communicate with your higher maker. That is all we are telling them. However, they choose to find that quiet place, however they choose, persons pray in different manners. But definitely we're saying you cannot pray in an environment where it's noisy, an environment where you are, are placed in these hazmat suits and, and, and sweating profusely. You cannot pray in this sort of environment. You cannot pray in an environment where the employer really doesn't concern you, don't care about you. So find that quiet, quiet spot where you can really reflect and intercede and, and, and call on a higher power to really speak to the powers that be. We have been trying at nauseum um, in excess of five to six years to speak to the Ministry of Health, to speak to the regional health authorities, just let them know this is unfair. And you know, I really must um, make mention of two thirds blackout coming up, and we really would have to support um, our comrades well, at two thirds because we feel the good that they feel where you engage in consultation really to insult because they don't really truly understand the role of consultation to resolve issues in an amicable matter. Mr. Stewart? When the no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was just, just yeah. going to tell you that it seems like it's a blockbuster blackout weekend. And, and in that regard, um, you're saying that you were not given a listening voice. If you are able to have that conversation with the powers that be, obviously the budget more than likely is set for Monday already. But what would be your budget? wish list to really alleviate and bring some um, some sort of, of, of normalcy and some sort of security, I think security is the word here, to your particular body, the nurses and, 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 all, and all sundry. The nursing and the free point here is for the Minister of Health to fulfill his commitment given by past ministers of finance partners of health to resolve some of our issues. Issues that have been put before them several occasions, data, statistics. So it's, we don't want anything new. All we want is for you to fulfill your commitment. Instead of going and engage in new spending, which the government all too well knows. Imagine you, we are within the health sector. The health sector has seen the mushrooming of several healthcare facilities throughout Trinidad and Tobago. In fact, we have over 14 secondary healthcare facilities in Trinidad and Tobago. There's nowhere else in the Caribbean, nowhere else internationally have more health, secondary healthcare facilities per square mile than Trinidad and Tobago. So we have no issue in finding new money to build new facilities. But we have an issue with finding money 
to pay the persons you already have on your establishment. So you have already committed to bringing these persons on, but you are not committing to pay them the salary which was negotiated since 2030. Mr. So Stewart. it's really ironic. Yeah. No, I just want to thank you for coming on and, and, and giving some light uh, to the issues. Uh, we hope that they are indeed resolved. Um, feel free to come back and give us an update. Um, and what you're asking for, it's, it's not rocket science. It's a sense of security. Um, obviously, a uh, desire to keep the promise that's already there. And, um, you know, obviously what you all do, it's a matter of life and death. It's very, very critical. Um, that's a calling. That's, that's a real serious task on your hands there. And I really hope they sort things out with you and your team. Um, thanks for coming on and, and keep us posted up. Huh? Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, J JW. Enjoy your day. All the best. Wow, so it seems like the nurses and the midwives tomorrow, uh, they're going to take um, a day of prayer. It seems like it's going to be a blockbuster blackout weekend. Uh, the nurses, the, the teachers, uh, who next? Wow, this is interesting developments here ahead. Uh, we're going to take a quick one and come back and touch base with our friends out of the San Fernando Chamber of Commerce uh, to find out more as it relates to rolling out all the safe zones and just their perspective as we get ready for budget day 2022 stand by morning brew